What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor back with another Get Licensed Driving School video and today we're going to talk about cockpit controls. So the first thing that you need to do when you get in a new car, so your instructor's car or a hire car, zip car, etc, is you're going to need to set it up so that it fits you. The person driving it before you might be a different height, size, shape to you, they're going to need the mirrors in a different place, the seat, height, backrest in a different way, so you're going to need to know how to set up the car so that you can drive it. So this is all before you've even thought about driving, before you even switch on the engine, we're going to set the car up using DSSSM, D -S 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 -M, and that stands for doors, seats, steering wheel, seat belt and mirrors. Once we've done all of those things, then we can start thinking about moving off. Okay, so the first thing, D is for doors. We need to make sure that all of the doors are closed properly on every single corner of the car. You as the driver are responsible for all of the doors in the car. So if someone gets into your passenger side and closes the door really gently because they don't drive and they want to respect your car and they want to close it gently and not damage the door. And if that door's not properly closed, you drive down the motorway at 70 miles an hour and the door flies open, you as the driver are responsible for that. So if I jump in the car and I jump in really gently and I close the door, gently like that, it feels closed. In fact, I can bang the door as well and it feels closed. It looks like it's not gonna come open, but have a look at this. The door's vibrating quite a lot. It's definitely not latched properly shut. So if we drive down the motorway at 70 miles an hour like that, that's gonna be a problem. So we need to make sure that we ask our passenger to open the door and close it nice and firmly. Okay, so there's a couple of indicators that can help you see when your doors are open or not properly closed. So have a look up here. There's the light. When I open the door, the light turns on. So that's obviously if it's dark, the light turns on when you open the door so that you can see stuff or you switch off the engine, the light turns on. It also shows you when your doors aren't closed properly because if you don't close your doors properly, the light won't turn off. Also on modern cars, they've got sensors. So on my car, when I drive off and one of the doors aren't properly closed, it will flash up on the dashboard and let me know which door is not closed properly. If you've got an older car or your light's not working, you can also use your mirrors to tell you when the doors are open or closed. If your front door's not matching up to the back door in line, then your door's not closed properly. That works on the passenger side as well. Next is seat. We need to adjust the seat so that you're sitting in a comfortable position. You can reach the pedals and the steering wheel and your back's gonna be comfortable on a long journey. Let's do that now. So if I hold the steering wheel with one hand and I grab the lever underneath the seat with the other hand, I can pull myself backwards and forwards. And to test that, I'm gonna press my left foot down onto the left pedal and make sure that I can press the clutch all the way to the floor. It's really important that you can press the clutch all the way down to the floor. That's the test whether you've got your rake set correctly. Okay, so there's mine set correctly. Next, what I'm gonna do is adjust the height of the seat. So if I look down to my right on my car, forward focus, there's a lever. If I press that down and pump it, I go lower, pull it up, I go higher. How you wanna have that set is you're not too high to the ceiling when you go over a bump. You don't wanna bump your head on the ceiling. You don't wanna to be too low so that you can't see over the steering wheel. It's gonna impair your vision and you're gonna miss things that are low down. For me, there is about good. I've got a good distance from me to the ceiling. I'm not too low, I can see over the steering wheel, life's good. So next we're gonna adjust the backrest. If I run my hand all the way to the back of the seat, this is different on all cars. I've got a dial which I can move backwards and that gives me a nice relaxing armchair. No, so that backrest isn't there for helping you chill out. You don't want it to be too far back because you're going to be too relaxed. Imagine doing that on a motorway when you're already tired. What you also don't want to be is too high up. Look at the angle of that seat now. I'm really alert. You don't want to be sitting up too high like that. If you're on a journey for more than 20 minutes, this is going to start to get really uncomfortable. You want to have it in a position where you're nice and relaxed, leaning back slightly, but still upright. That's a comfortable position for me. Find your comfortable position in your car. Lastly, with the seat, we've got a headrest. The headrest isn't there to rest your head on so that you can take a nap in the car on the motorway when you need to close your eyes that's not what it's there for what it's there for is to protect your head in the event of an accident if you have a crash you don't want your neck to hyperextend because that's how you get whiplash you want your head to be supported by the headrest so it stays nice and level that's exactly what it's for so we need the middle of the headrest in line with our ears and eyes so that the bony part of your head goes into the softest most cushioned part of the headrest in the event of an accident not just for general driving so we can adjust the headrest for me that's perfect but the headrest moves up and down and you should adjust it to make sure that the middle of your head is in the middle of the headrest next we're going to adjust the steering wheel on nearly every car, the steering wheel is adjustable. If you've got a really, really old classic car, it might not be, but all modern cars, the steering should be adjustable. So with mine, we reach down and there's a lever to release the steering column and the steering goes in 
out and up and down. What you don't want to have is a steering wheel too low. Look at that, it's going to be banging on my knees. My hands and knees are going to get in the way of each other. So I need it slightly higher for me. You need to be able to see the instruments through this hole at the top of the steering wheel. That's really important. So don't have it too high while you're too low so that it impedes your vision of the dials. That height is perfect for me. I can see everything. It's not in the way of my knees and I can see over the steering wheel. It's not impeding my vision of the road. Next, what about how far back I want it? If I push it in, that gives me a nice bend in my elbow. I don't want to have my elbow extended because again, that'll make your shoulders tired. That's going to be uncomfortable. It's not correct. Let's have the steering wheel out slightly more so that we've got a bend in the elbow. It's going to help you feel more relaxed. And if you feel more relaxed when driving, everything's going to be a little bit more calmer. So let's lock that back in place. And now my steering wheel set as well. We've done doors, seat and steering wheel. What's next? Seat belt. When you put your seat belt on, it's really important to have the belt with no twist in it, have a look at this. If I put the seatbelt on and twist it, oh, if I was to have an accident, and that is quite a sharp edge, when the seatbelt extends and it cuts into my neck, that's gonna end up bad. So just make sure that you run your finger down the seatbelt, pull it down, and then run your finger down it again so that the seatbelt's nice and flat, so that if you do need it and your seatbelt does lock, you've got the nice flat edge protecting you and holding you back from smashing into anything hard in the car. So guys, you need to wear a seatbelt all the time while you're driving, literally all the time. If you've got the engine on, you should be wearing a seatbelt. The only exceptions for that is if you're doing a maneuver that involves reversing, you can reach behind. Some people find that difficult. So in that case, you can take your seatbelt off so that you can see what's happening behind you a little bit more easily. But as soon as you're not doing that maneuver, seatbelt needs to go back on again. The other exception is if you've got an, a medical exemption. So if the police pull you over and you don't have a seatbelt on, expect to get into trouble because it's there for your safety. Okay, so we've done doors, seat, steering wheel, seat belt, and lastly, we've got mirrors. Once we've done the mirrors, the car is ready to go. So I'm gonna adjust my center mirror first, it's manual. So what I wanna see is the whole of my back window, top of the window, bottom of the window, and if I've got it right, I'll see mine and the passenger headrest in the left and right corner. That looks great. What I don't want to do is just start doing that with the, no, now I've got finger marks all over my, my mirror. It's really annoying when people do that. So, thumb and finger on the outside edge, great. And here's a top tip, try and adjust it from your normal driving position. So I drive like this and I'm adjusting it like this. If I start to adjust my mirror like this, okay, that's fine from where I'm sitting now, but where I'm sitting now, I can't see the mirror anymore. So, adjust it from your normal driving position. Next, right hand mirror. I'm gonna adjust that so I can see half sky, half pavement, and about two fingers, 10% of car on the left-hand side. All right, got that there. And on my left-hand mirror, I can see half sky, half road, and about two fingers of car there. Brilliant. Okay, so if there are houses on top of the road, obviously you won't be able to see half sky, half road. You're gonna see half houses, half road, or trees, whatever's in your left mirror. Mirrors are kind of a personal thing if you find it useful to see a little bit more road or a little bit more car or a little bit less car you adjust that but i would recommend you go with what your instructor says at first until you get used to driving and used to using the mirrors and then you can start adjusting it personalizing it for how you prefer to see that okay mail mirrors are fine i'm now ready to drive So guys, I hope you found that video useful, mainly just for revision. If you're doing driving lessons at the moment, your instructor will have taught you DSSM. I know it's really hard to remember all of the acronyms and mnemonics, so refer back to this video whenever you need it so that you can remember door, seat, steering wheel, seat belt, and mirrors. Door, seat, steering wheel, seat belt, mirrors. It's really useful. Get your car set up exactly perfectly every single time, and then the rest should flow. If you found this video helpful, give it a like down below, comment below. I read through all the comments. If there's anything else that you want me to explain or video, I will, and I'll be commenting back with you guys. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.